Now, it's a, I often think of natural selection as a factory, a factory for making almost impossible things. And strangely enough, um, that was my first experience of natural selection. I left school to train to become an engineer, rather foolishly, or fitter rather than an engineer. And I went to work in, uh, in the Unilever's, Lever Brothers soap factory on Liverpool's left bank in the Willow Peninsula, of the Port Sunlight. And I worked in what was known as the detergent shed. And the way you make detergent then and now, you take an enormous vat, not quite as big as this room, but pretty big, um, filled with a boiling chemical liquid, and you push the um, liquid uh, through a, a nozzle and it comes screaming out at a tremendous noise, which is one of the reasons I'm deaf. Um, it comes screaming out and, the, uh, in, and breaks into a powder which falls and you collect it in the vapour which you fan around and condense and use again. And in my day, the nozzle looked like this. About this big, simple construction, constriction, and it didn't work very well. Um, it uh, made grains of different sizes, it got blocked, and most important, it wore out very quickly. And these things, which were made of stainless steel, were very expensive. So um, the factory owners across the world uh, hired intelligent designers, mathematicians, to try and make it better without much success because the mathematics of shifting of a phase transition, as it's known, shifting from a, a liquid into a powder plus a vapor is not easy to understand. So almost without, almost without realizing it, these people, these engineers, moved to a precise analogy of the Darwinian mechanism of inherited differences in reproduction. What they did was to take these nozzles, copy them, mutate them, uh, take one copy and change it slightly, make it longer or shorter, different place for the constriction, a longer or shorter constriction, scratches on the inside, and maybe one <coughs> of the ten copies they made did better. So they took that one, melted the other nine down, uh, they took that one, and they made ten more copies, uh, changed at random once again, mutated once again. And they went through that process again and again, and as they went through that process, something fairly remarkable began to happen. You began to evolve an almost impossible nozzle through this process of natural selection. And after only 45 generations, we end up with this extraordinary thing, which works probably 100 times better than what went before, okay? Nobody designed that. Nobody knows why it works better. Nobody needs to know why it works better. It just works better. And that's evolution by natural selection. And this approach is now widely used by engineers, by computer scientists. It's a standard approach in many, uh, many aspects of technology.